This is about knowing the asset. It's about who, what, what is the underlying asset? The underlying asset is art. So this is about really knowing how art performs. Funds help bring greater transparency, greater transactional integrity. You're dealing in a marketplace where there is only one object and one version of it, even if it's made by the same artist. And that fundamentally changes the dynamics of the marketplace. Being a good fund manager is all about being able to recognize and exploit opportunities in the marketplace. Of course, that means you have to have a really deep and good understanding of your underlying asset. When one looks at an artwork, uh, you're really looking at uh, the market for that specific artist. You're looking at what buyers are buying on a regular basis. You're looking at, um, you know, uh, when uh, the artist was um, more active, whether his works from the early period are uh, more collectible and more in vogue in today's um, interior. Because it makes you think about, it makes you think about why you want something, why something is more important than something else, because it kind of really makes you have to evaluate what's better than other things. So investing in art compared to investing in other alternative assets, if you think of alternative assets in a traditional sense, which in, it includes hedge funds, private equity funds, or venture capital projects, then there are some very distinct similarities to investing in art. These include a high barriers to entry, which means that you have to have a high capital um, investment to enter the enter the space. Second thing is that they tend to be quite lightly regulated, which means um, that it, it tends to be more for individuals rather than institutions. And thirdly, alternative investments tend to make a, a different risk return proposal, a much higher risk, but the opportunity of a greater upside. If the fund is investing wisely and they are purchasing artworks by uh, well-known, reputable artists and even up-and-coming artists um, and they're buying good pieces that at a good price you will turn a profit on it. Sometimes you might have to wait for the piece to sell a little bit um, but you're you're relying on the person who's running the fund to be able to track the market and pick the best time to actually sell something. Our our ability to price an artwork correctly lies within 92% of accuracy. I'm Enrique Lieberman and I am the president of the Art Fund Association and the Art Fund Association was formed in 2009 um, by some of the really leaders and pioneers of the art fund industry and it was formed primarily to act as a way to promote the idea that a properly structured and managed art investment fund can produce significant investment returns for its investors. It gives you the opportunity to uh, feel like you're owning a piece even if it's only for a short amount of time and a piece that you might not be able to invest uh, fully in in yourself or be willing to take the risk to do it yourself. You're, you're, take, you're letting the fun take the risk. Um, so I think that um, it's definitely be, becoming a more and more popular uh, investment for those who aren't um, ready to take the plunge uh, independently. I would consider buying from an investment fund because it provides you with the opportunity to treat art as an asset class in a very rational and systematic way. Art funds are an investments in all luxury assets are, an, are a great additional tool that uh, private wealth managers now have to further diversify investors' portfolios. Um, you know, going back even 10 years ago, private wealth managers just thought of things in terms of two buckets, stocks and bonds. And now we're starting to really understand that that's not enough and that you need to put at least between 3 and 8% of your net worth into alternative investments and primarily into luxury assets in order to make sure that, you know, down the line, you're going to get the investment returns that you're hoping for. And there's a number of reasons why. I mean, art investment funds and investments in fine art are highly uh, uncorrelated to traditional investment markets. When real estate and the stock markets go down, um, art investment funds, you know, generally don't. And the artworks that they hold retain a lot of their value. Um, artworks are in and of themselves great uh, hedges against inflation and they're important tools to hedge against inflation. 
and you're actually not making a portfolio until you have the intent to build a portfolio that is conveniently diversified to reduce risk and get the highest rate of return. So when um, you're looking to purchase an artwork, uh, you really want to uh, have the eye of a specialist, whether it's someone that's going to advise you or like in Artemundi, you've got Javier who is a specialist in his own right. So I think it's the same dynamic that's happened in the financial markets is beginning to take hold in the art world. The old ways of doing things are quickly turning into bygone days and it's driven by several things. One, the value of the art as assets keeps getting higher. The market's now completely globalized, so the work may have gone around the world four or five times before it showed up at a given gallery or auction house that a client's now looking to purchase. So the whole perspective of risk, if you will, the need for transparency, the historical problems of an unregulated industry have come to bear. I find that people who want to get involved in art as an investment but are hesitant to trust their own opinions, uh, their own expertise uh, and connoisseurship, um, the, being able to work or invest in an art fund gives them that opportunity to jump on the bandwagon of someone who does know what they're looking at, someone who does have a good eye and a good track record of buying works and selling them and making, getting a profit at them. When we put together the portfolio, uh, we have an investment protocol. The investment protocol is a methodology where we give certain uh, valuation to every time we examine an artwork, we do it on a committee. And that artwork is being examined on three main categories. One is the technical, the second one is the academic, and the third one is the financial. The one asset, one at a time, is secure to help with the auditing function, it helps with risk disclosure, it helps eliminate liabilities of the fund at exit, because the fund then has to guarantee title to the next buyer, which creates contingent liabilities, and how do you account for that, and close the fund, and release funds to the investors. So, in a more sophisticated model, which is where the industry is going, where these questions are everyday easy questions with easy answers in other industry sectors, it's now becoming the norm in the art world as it grows up. Uh, and, and, and you guys, are, of course, are a great example of that. We offer sellers of works the ability to sell to us with uh, discretion, uh, with immediate uh, fund availability, and at fair valuations. So that's one part of where we make our money. The second one is we add value. How do we add value? We, we usually try to get acad um, you know, academic expertise and essays written on the paintings. Uh, we uh, sometimes uh, undergo uh, restoration of the artworks, cleaning mostly. We also, sometimes we can improve a frame. That's a simple way of doing something. And otherwise, loaning the paintings to museums and important exhibitions, that also adds value. And I think that also knowing that you're buying a painting from Artemundi Global Fund has an additional value. I think that the auction houses have made uh, immense uh, reaches or immense outreach into the art world to find buyers really globally. Uh, but at the same time, the auction houses uh, don't have, in my opinion, the responsibility of a longer-term vision of the art world and the art market. In the 21st century, obviously, the art market has grown a lot. It's huge now, and everybody, and there's a lot of press attention on the art market, much more than there was you know, maybe 50 years ago or something. It seemed, you know, it seems that everybody's obsessed by the art world and how much things sell for at the auctions. I think people at, at the auction houses should be wearing t-shirts that say, create desire, because there's that moment in an auction room where 
somebody challenges you, you want something and somebody wants it as much as you do. And you feel so challenged that you're gonna do whatever you have to do and pay whatever you have to pay because otherwise that person's going to get it and you're not. And that's what, that's what fires up an auction, that's what an auction is, is predicated on, is finding two if not 10 such people uh, for the same horse race. I think we're kind of unique, not only in the, in the way we diversify our portfolio, but also in terms of uh, we, we're just about the only fund that has achieved the returns that has achieved and has closed um, successfully. What I think differentiates an art fund like Art Mundi Global Art Fund is the deep expertise of the people that are involved. They understand artworks as an asset class, but they also understand artworks as an important part of our culture. And they work with existing institutions in, in a positive way, but also represent their investors' needs um, in a way that is sensitive to both collecting and investing. The price of the share at the beginning of the fund, the book value per share was $500. The book value per share at the end of the fund uh, was $983. So basically, we almost doubled the investment. If you would have invested a dollar in Artemuni Global Fund, by the end of year five, you would have had almost $2. Um, Artemuni Global Fund had, a, had capital commitments from the, um, on the, on the, on the first PPM from 100, from 150 to 125 million. We had a volume of 161 million in transactions, and the assets under management, the combined assets under management from 2010 to 2015, was 220 million. I'm a firm believer in what we might also call monetization of art as an asset class. Again, not displacing culture in the equation. Uh, and we see that both in art investment funds and in the platforms that are using art as collateral for lending, for uh, guarantee structures to the market. It's, it's just the market growing up around a high value asset. And now that we know how art performs, now that we know how the asset behaves, now that we know what investment categories are more best in the short term, in the long term, which ones are more volatile, what is the price earnings ratio of a painting, we can very well determine how to fit that painting within the portfolio. So I think with, for the next fund, which I think we plan on having another fund, well, the investment portfolio is going to be more optimized, it's going to be more efficient, it's going to, be, uh, it's going to produce even higher returns, it's going to lower the risk. But not only that, I think we are sort of becoming like a one-stop shop, meaning Artemundi is now capable of offering many other, many other products, such as loans, guarantees. Just, it's not just about the transaction, it's about some kind of intellectual exchange as well, which again sounds a bit high and mighty, but it's not supposed to. Because um, that just makes it just much more fun for everyone, you know, it makes it more fun for us, more fun for them, more fun for the artists. One of the most important factors when we buy an artwork is what we call the wow factor, which is, uh, you know, a painting comes up to us and we have a first confrontation with the artwork for the first time and we go, that's the type of work you wouldn't buy.